June 09 exam. It's page 9. It's the second half of the page. Starting the question 52 and 53. A force of 60 newtons is applied to a rope. So the 60 newtons is going up this way. You're pulling on a rope. And you're pulling it across a horizontal surface. Got it? At a constant velocity. So there's no net force. The rope is at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. All right, nice little picture. Calculate the magnitude of the component of the 60 Newton force that is parallel to the horizontal component. So it's this component, or parallel to the horizontal surface. That would be called the horizontal component. Show all work, including the equation and substitution with units. All right. So we go to the separate answer sheet. First thing we got to do is so we list our knowns. Force is 60 newtons. The angle is 30 degrees. I'm going to do a little sketch here. 60 newtons, 30 degrees. And I'm interested in this component of the right triangle. Part of your, your uh, force is pulling it upwards, making the sled slightly lighter, and the majority of it is going to be pulling it forward. Which part? So I want the force that's in the x direction. And that's what I'm looking for. When I go to my mechanics equations, I find these kind of interesting equations. I have this set here that says any vector's y component is equal to any vector times the sine of the angle, and any vector's x component is equal to any vector's times the cosine of the angle. So if I were to write any vector x is equal to any vector cosine theta, what particular vector am I interested in this problem? Of course, it's the force one. So I can say force in the x direction is equal to the force times the cosine of the angle. I plug in 60 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. So now I get the calculator out and I do this. The cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866. You multiply that by 60 newtons times 60, and that gives me 51.9. So the force would be. 51.9 newtons. I imagine 52 would be acceptable. So that's the first part of the problem. Question 53. Determine the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the sled. Well, this is a little tricky. And it's determining it rather than calculating. So this is a thought process. We've got to think about what's going on. Well, we've got, what do we figure? We've got about uh, 52 newtons actually trying to make it move in that direction. But we're also told it's traveling at a constant velocity. Now, if that's true, these 52 newtons of horizontal force have to be balanced off by another 52 newtons of force so that the net force is equal to zero. Well, we've decided that we're applying a force of 52, but it's not accelerating. It's a constant velocity. We know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if there's no acceleration, there's no net force. So it looks to me like the force of friction is fighting this. So if I decide that my force uh, applied is 51.9 newtons or 52 newtons, then my force of friction must be equal to that opposite direction, and so it would be 51.9 newtons. And let's read the wording. Determine the magnitude of the frictional force. If they asked what was the magnitude of the force, we would put a negative to indicate that it was going in the opposite direction. But frictional opposes motion, so it's implied in the uh, question itself. So I probably would uh, throw the negative 51.9 newtons anyway. In question 54, a book sliding across a horizontal tabletop slows until it comes to rest. So you push the book, 
it slows until it comes to rest. What causes to slow? Obviously, friction does that. Now describe what change, if any, occurs in the book's kinetic energy and internal energy. Well, we'd have to think about this. Kinetic energy is uh, right there, one half mv squared. So kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. We're told that it's going to uh, slow down and stop. So it's got some kinetic energy, but uh, as the velocity goes down, so will the kinetic energy drastically. And um, so the kinetic energy will will uh, lessen less kinetic energy to zero. All right, I like that. And then uh, internal energy. And we gotta have to remember that that internal energy is heat. And in fact, the thing that causes it to slow down will be friction, molecular interactions between the book and the, the tabletop. And that molecular action causes the molecules to move a little bit faster. And that's the definition of internal energy, or heat, is the internal movement of molecules. So I think I'm ready for an answer. I'm going to write uh, in the appropriate blank. All right, I'm ready for an answer here. I'm going to write that kinetic energy decreases to zero. Internal energy increases by the amount of kinetic energy lost. I like that. Sure hope they don't grade for penmanship. <laughs>